Alright, rockers, join me now here inside the Asylum, the front man of a band I've been playing for you since I got their new album, Raise a Little Hell, earlier this year. None other than Cormac Neeson vocals from The Answer right now here inside the Asylum. Cormac, how are you, man? I'm doing all right, man. Just uh, glad to be on your show. Good to be in the United States of America. Good, man. All right, now, you guys are out uh, on tour right now with White Snake. How's the tour been for you guys so far? It's been going very well so far. Um, it's been a really nice tour, I have to say. You know, the, the White Snake audiences are, are definitely enjoying what we do. Um, you know, we're playing in front of kind of three, four thousand capacity theaters, so. It's just a nice size of venue for us. It's not too big that we can't can't make a connection, um, and you know, it, it, it's but yeah, it's big enough to really, uh, you know, it, it means there's a lot of people going home and talking about the band every night, and you know, as well as that, we've got we've got plenty of our own headline shows and a few festivals thrown in there for good measure as well. So there's a, a really nice balance to this tour. Very cool, man, and. You know, I think the key thing, and I want to let everyone know that's listening to this, is that this is not your first time that the answer is coming around the states. You guys actually were here once before with ACDC for their Black Ice tour, and unfortunately it was an, an issue I've heard uh, at that time that caused a delay in the album being released resulting in you guys just now making your break with your new album here in the States. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. We spent a lot of time covering a lot of ground in the United States and in Canada as well with ACDC. We, were, we pretty much spent a year and a half of our lives um, touring around America and Canada with those guys. And, uh, you know, we, we made a lot of good friends along the way. And then, you know, it's the, the old classic story of, of record label problems and, and stuff going on behind the scenes. And for one reason or another, it's, it's taken us six years to come back again. You know, it's just been a long time. Um, in many ways, it feels like we're, we're starting from scratch all over again. But that's fine, you know. This tour is the right kind of tour to get a buzz up, up and going again. And uh, we're just happy to be here. We're, we're giving it everything we've got. And, uh, you know, as I say, it's good to be back. Well, we're definitely glad to have you guys back here in the States. And, yeah, I, I love the tunes. I, I got the album earlier this year. It was sent over to me, and I, I turned it on, and I looked you guys up as I was digging into it, and I'm going, now, these guys have been around for 10 years, and, yeah, as I said, I found out you guys have been around, but I missed you due to the label issues in the past. And, yeah, I look at how long you guys have been around, and... You know, 10 years when you guys, 10 years ago when you guys first started, was kind of that, still that new way, that new metal kind of thing that was going on. Everyone was looking for that new sound. But what made you guys, when you guys got together to create an answer and start making the kick-ass music that you are making, what made you guys decide to go with this old-school hard rock, hard blues style, as opposed to what everyone else was doing at that time? Um, I, honestly, I don't think it was one conscious decision to, to go in a particular direction. It was really the music that we've always made has been our metal ground in the band. You know, all four of us write the songs, all four of us have equal say in everything we do. And, uh, you know, our sound is something that's just developed organically over the years, um, you know, off the back of our influences, you know, obviously play a big part in that. A lot of, you know, we, we all listen to a lot of 70s rock. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's what makes us tick. Um, our sound is what we're passionate about, you know, and, it, and it's developed kind of, uh, you know, if you listen to all five records, you can hear... Um, I would say an evolution of sorts uh, going on there and it's continuing to evolve and 
that's what that's what keeps it fun and keeps things fresh for us is that we're not uh, you know we're not a closed book um, we, we approach our music with open minds and as long as we're all passionate about what we do then, then uh, it's, it's always going to work for us well it definitely is working for sure and you know, you, you, know, you mentioned that you guys your influences are you know, from the 70s hard rock bands as are uh, many nowadays it's the 70s and we're just starting to hear people say their influences were from the 80s as the younger generation is coming through. And in case anyone hasn't figured out yet, Cormac is from uh, Ireland, if I, uh, correct, Cormac? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah I wanted to make sure I got it right. I didn't want to offend because I know if you get it wrong, it can be offensive. I've done that in the past and never done it. Oh, yeah. Before. No, no, no. I mean, we're, we're all from kind of in and around the Belfast area of Northern Ireland, Ireland, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, that, that, that's where we're from. And I mean, it, 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 it's basically the Belfast music scene is the music scene we emerged from. And uh, at that time and to this day, there's a very eclectic vibe to what, what's going on in Belfast. You know, there's a lot of other different types of bands uh, playing at, at a relatively high level, you know, they're, they're uh, you know, there's there's a lot of pump going on, there's a lot of indie, a lot of hard rock, a lot of metal, a lot of a, a big DJ scene, you know, it, it's all going on, so there's plenty to choose from, and you just have to be, um, you just have to be confident in your own identity as a band, you know, so that you can kind of stand out from the crowd. Absolutely, and... Yeah, I mean, you guys definitely do stand out. That is a given. And, yeah, I, now I gotta ask, were your influences, you know, come, as you guys were listening in the 70s, I mean, a lot of the influence of it has been from bands from Europe of that era to so many, whether it's Led Zeppelin, The Stones, Thin Lizzy. Was, was that the same for, for you and for the band, or were there any uh, American bands that were part of your influence during that time frame? Um, yeah, I would say a lot of American parents have had, a, have had a, a big influence in what we do. I mean, we were all kind of kids in the middle of the grunge era, you know? So, I mean, our, the first the first records we were going out and buying would have been Fancy Smashing Pumpkins and Pearl Jam and, and Soundgarden, Nirvana, and people like that, you know? Um, so, I mean, well, we most definitely have been influenced by, by the Irish bands and the British bands that you've mentioned. Um, you know, there's always been one ear on the on the United States, um, and, and that continues to this day. You know, there's always been a, a, a rich vein of, of rock to come out of the, the States, and, and uh, you know, you guys keep... Every every year and a half, you guys throw another great band our direction, and, and we appreciate that. Well, I tell you what, we appreciate everything that you guys do our way. It's uh, kind of a mutual back and forth between you know, what we have coming up in bands and what Europe has coming up in bands. And of course, uh, that brings me around to the, the age-old question. And maybe it's less of a difference nowadays than maybe it was 10 to 15 years ago now that the U.S. is starting to do more festivals like uh, Europe is on for so many years. What's, what's your take, you know, being around for the last 10 years and now seeing the U.S. add those festivals, do you think the gap between rock and metal between the states and Europe is finally maybe starting to close and we may be getting closer to everyone kind of uh, really noticing bands sooner rather than years in between due to the difference in continents? Um, that's, a, that's a very wide-reaching question, man, you know, and I, and I don't know if I really have enough of a grasp on everything that's going on in the States right now to answer that, you know. Um, I mean, what I have noticed is this summer we we played our first run of American festivals, and that just didn't happen. 
um, six years ago, you know, possibly because there weren't as many going on, but we've already played Summerfest in Milwaukee um, and a couple of other ones are, are to follow, you know. Um, and, you know, Summerfest, it, it definitely had a, had a European vibe to it. Um, I was discover- I mean, I, I, left, I left that night really happy because I discovered three or four new bands that, it was, that I wanted to go and check out and uh, continue to do so. Um, and that's, you know, festivals are always a great way to, to discover new bands and for, for young bands to get breaks as well, you know, and, and make a connection with the fan base. And, and you know, a, a couple of days at a festival can change a young band's life, and, and that's a very great thing. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's so many ways now for bands to get their breaks, and festivals are probably the best way to do it because there are so many people at a festival in any random time that you're always bound to catch the ear of at least a dozen or so people. And now you say a few of the bands at the festival you guys play at caught your ear. Could, could I perhaps ask you who they are? Maybe tell us what bands caught your ear that maybe we, we need to keep an, uh, an eye open for. Yes, now hold on, you're testing me here. I actually scribbled a bunch of names down. Um, when I drive in there, give me two seconds. Yeah, no worries. Hold on, man. I'm yeah. trying to find my list, you know. Um, yeah. Let's see. And this guy, the, the names escaped me. Now, I took my JKR and the somethings, and it was a dude. The long hair, maybe your listeners can help me out. There's a dude with long hair, plays piano. They're kind of like hard rock meets Americana, would be the way I would describe it. And it was just, uh, it was just fantastic stuff. And they seem to, they seem to have a, a bit of a following as well. You know, there was maybe four or five hundred people who were, uh, who were, who were into it. You know, so it, it's good to see that that the bands are got. Or, or, or get my chance, you know. The names just escape me right now, man. But uh, I mean, I got to see four or five bands, and I've got a list on the phone somewhere, which I just can't find. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Hey, we, hey, you know how it goes. You hear? Yeah, when you're at a festival, you're so uh, you're so into the music that you forget. You know, you know you write it down, and then when you go to look for it later, you forget where you put it or or what it was, or you worry if you spelled it wrong. Trust me, I have been there. I know that feeling, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? I mean, it's just, like, my point is, it's just, that festival and Summerfest, you know, it was like, there was something like 10 or 12 stages. I know it's, it's, its tagline is the biggest festival in America, and it really did feel like that, you know? It's not like a big, giant, concrete version of a festival we have back home called Glastonbury. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, no, you, you, there's, there's something going on over here over the summertime for sure, and that's a great thing. It, it definitely is. I mean, you know, one thing, you know, like you, you, you and I both have said you and our, our time together is that, you know, it gives the up-and-coming band a chance uh, that they might not have had before, and that's really one of the great things about the festivals. And uh, now I want to ask you. Guys, oh man, I've got hold well, on, I've got the, I've got the name. It's Jimmy Roddy Wollstone and the business. Ah, uh, there we go. Man. You know those guys? I haven't, but I'll have to to check them out for sure. And there was a guy called Tim Carroll, and, and the Tim Carroll band, who again were, were were equally impressive. There was also this like 14, 13 or fourteen year old country singer called Amy Sunshine. And um, man, I mean, if, if what was said on stage is true, she writes all her own songs. Some of those songs were good songs, you know. It was just um, it was just an impressive day of music. Awesome, man. Just awesome. Definitely stuff I'll, I'll look into, and I'm sure my listeners will as well. And I know you got the answer out right now with White Snake, Raise a Little Hell is out in stores wherever you buy your music. And I want to touch real quick. I know you're busy. I know you're out of stop today on the tour. 
I want to touch quick on the video that you guys uh, recently released for Gone Too Long. Uh, really, really great video there. And uh, What made you guys decide that that was what the song you wanted to do the video for? Um, so, I mean, that's the way we shot in um, in a, a, a venue in Belfast called the Empire Music Hall, which is a really kind of iconic local venue. It's one of these places that whenever you're a kid putting a band together for the first time, that's the venue you want to get a gig at, you know. And uh, we subsequently have played there, I would imagine, 40 or 50 times over over the band's career. Um, so... It was kind of a whenever we were we were looking for we, you know we wanted to set up a video that kind of played on played on the themes of isolation loneliness and stuff like that you know and and we needed a we needed a good big old venue like like the one the Empire Music Hall is it's actually a, a used to be a church um, and they turned it into a, a bar downstairs and a venue upstairs um, so. Basically, that video was a very simple concept. It was just get in there and do a bit of filming, kind of do a little bit off the wall stuff as well. You know, I had like the the uh, the New Orleans uh, Easy Rider graveyard scene in mind. You know, and I wanted I wanted the director to kind of have some a little bit something a little bit trippy going on there too. You know, so it was really just the director, one cameraman, and myself. Um, and, and we just spent a day in this, this big old iconic venue and, and put together that video um, over the course of that, over the course of an afternoon, really. You know, so we're really happy with the way it came out. I definitely came out well. I checked it out. Uh, I believe actually yesterday I checked it out. And I have a, a, a my background is actually in TV production, and the first thing I, I loved about it was that. You guys had no uh, hesitation in going for the black and white format, and I think that really helped to add the emotion uh, into the video and, and, and into the song as well, as opposed to, to doing it in color. That, that black and white just seemed to take it to that next level uh, and really helped the song really hit the mark that you guys were going for. Yeah, well, you know, there's something kind of nostalgic about, about watching a video of Black and White. That song has a touch of nostalgia going on about it. Um, and Black and White is something we've never done before as well, so we're constantly, you know, with everything we do, we're trying to do do, do everything a little different to the to the time before, you know. Um, so, yeah, the, the Black and White was an easy decision to make this time around. Definitely, man. It worked very well for you guys and uh, I look forward to seeing what the next one may be and uh, uh, also before I let you go Cormac as I said I know you're busy with the tonight show coming up and uh, I gotta ask you what the the future holds for you guys I did a quick look at your past albums that are out and for everyone here in the states they are out as imports uh, is there any hope or anything that works about getting the older albums from the answer re-released here in the States in a CD format or, uh, or, or even digitally. I don't know if they're available digitally. Is, there, is that being worked on or is it kind of just going to start from Raise a Little Hell forward for the States? Oh, finally, like as far as I know, all five of our records are available now. You know, um, I think around about the time of the release of New Horizon, which would have been the record before this one, we pretty much got everything out there, everything out into the public domain in America, so that um, you know our American fan base could could get their hands on the records because we had a couple of years of some pretty annoyed American fans because they couldn't, get, you know, they had to had to jump through hoops to get their hands on imported versions of our records. So all the music out there and I, um, I would say if, you, if you've heard Raise a Little Hell and you enjoy it, then you absolutely should check out the other four records because, you know, 
we, uh, as I say, our, our sound has evolved over those five, five records, but the, the soul of the band, the personality of the band remains the same. So, I mean, if you're into what we're doing now, you're going to enjoy what we've done, done in the past as well. Awesome. Well, I'm definitely going to dig a little deeper and see if I can find the copies that are not imports and get myself more of your music. I urge everyone else to do so. Raise a little hell from the answer available wherever you buy your music in Cormac. Before I let you go, as always, I have my guests uh, pick out something from their latest album, of course yours, being Raise a Little Hell. Uh, what song would be one you would want my listeners to hear? Um, that's a tough one. That's a tough one because there's a lot of good stuff on there. Let's go with Aristocrat. Aristocrat. Anything about that one? Maybe any backstory or anything you want to share with anyone before um, I play it? It was just one of those songs that developed very organically in the studio, you know. Um, it began as a jam, and we all kind of put our 50 cents worth into it. Um, I remember we were still writing the lyrics to that one as the guys were recording the music. So it all came together very last minute. And, um, you know, very often we have we have our songs pre-written before we head into the studio, but we always leave room for a few moments of magic, and Aristocrat was one of those moments. Awesome, man. We'll check this one out. A little bit of studio magic from the guys at the answer. This is Aristocrat for an album Raise a Little Hell. Stay tuned. More to come here inside the asylum. <laughs> 